In today's show, we're talking New York Knicks with the host of the Locked On Knicks podcast, Gavin Shawl, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter, as always, at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Earlier today, we did a New York Knicks show talking about their fantasy potential for sleepers and busts and all that sort of stuff. Now we're going to talk to a local expert to see what he thinks about the rotation and how things could go. And after the surprise season last year, you know, what's in store for this season? So let's talk to Gavin Shaw of Locked On Knicks and, uh, and bring him in right now. All right, let's bring him in now. The host of the Locked On Knicks podcast, Gavin Shawl, is here with me to talk Knicks. Gavin, welcome. Hey, what's up, Josh? Always good to be with you. Uh, love love being big in Australia. I know I know I have a, a massive fan base there, so uh, this is this is a very big deal for me. <laughs> I'm sure it's uh, sure it's absolutely gigantic over yeah. here for you, Gavin. But let, let's talk Knicks, and we start every one of these shows by asking the hosts the same question. What is your projected opening night starting five? I don't think there's any controversy in the next one, but let's have yours. No, it's really clean. It's Kemba Walker, Evan Fournier, uh, RJ Barrett, Julius Randle, and Mitchell Robinson. Yeah, look, I, I guess the only the only question mark in that would be Mitchell Robinson at center because if we hearken back to preseason last year, Nerlens and Wells started over Mitchell Robinson, then had the last two games off with a sore knee. And then unbelievably, we just saw you know, Rob Robinson slot into that spot. And then, of course, Noel started down the second half of the year with Robinson out and played pretty well. So is there is there any risk of that being a, of an issue of, um, of even a, a minute split in that position? Or is it just Robinson's position to lose? I, I think it's an issue in that I don't think he's going to get over 30 minutes a game no. this year because the Knicks obviously value Nerlens Noel and obviously intend for him to have a role, giving him that three-year contract at nearly $10 million a season. That being said, I think the playoffs, uh, granted Nerlens was playing hurt, made it abundantly clear that Mitchell Robinson is the better player. There was certainly um, a contingent of Knicks fans who were like, uh, myself included at certain points, who were like, you know, if Nerlens can do 90% of what Mitch does, why would you pay Mitch? And it became pretty clear that there's a significant difference between the two on the court. Um, in terms of Mitchell Robinson's rebounding and ability to create rebounding opportunities for their teammates. And he's, he's just a bigger threat around the basket. And I think the Knicks will see that this year. Robinson is up to 275 pounds by all accounts. That is good weight. I, I think he's ready to break out and have a career season. And ultimately will, will sort of separate himself from New Orleans Noel as two guys who are in similar molds, but with one being clearly a better player. If we go to that backcourt with their brand new guys to this team last season, as I've said in so many podcasts, they were starting Alfred Payton and Reggie Bullock. So you've got clear upgrades there with Kemba Walker and Evan Fournier, but the bench rotation is still pretty strong, With uh, which we're going to talk about the bench in the second rows and, and quickly there. Now, Tom Thibodeau has a thoroughly earned reputation for playing big minutes to players. Do you think that the Kemba Walker Fournier starting backcourt is considered considerably better than the Rose quickly bench combination in that they're going to play 34, 35 minutes a night and there's Alec Burks in the mix too? Or I've had some people say, no, nah, they, they'll just play like 27 minutes each or 28 minutes and they'll all get there. They go, how do you see that sort of um, split in the minutes in that backcourt going? I think it'll be very similar to the center position where there's a clear delineation but it's not necessarily as significant as you'd want it to be if you draft one of those two starting backcourt guys. I think Kemba's right around 28 minutes a night as, as sort of a preservation move and, and to give Derrick Rose a pretty significant role, which he frankly earned as far and away the next best player uh, this past postseason and the guy who drove their late season success a season ago. Evan Fournier, I think the spot's a little clearer. I think he, he gets a bit over 30 minutes a night just because there isn't necessarily a lot of depth or, or nearly the same amount of depth at that shooting guard spot. Obviously you do have Emmanuel quickly who played well off of Rose last year, but that's a little bit undersized to be a, a long-term starting backcourt on a game to game basis. And then you have Alec Burks, but I actually think the majority of his minutes are going to come at small forward. So I think Fournier has a pretty clear path to at least 30 minutes per game 
And I think he's a guy you could potentially see, at least in terms of efficiency, a career year from. I yeah, that's interesting. I will see how that goes. I, I disagree. I I think that Kemba and Fournier will get. They won't get thirty five and up, but they'll comfortably go over thirty. And then Rose will yeah. get a lot of that minutes, and it will leave very little for Emmanuel quickly. Like he's not going to be playing twenty four, twenty two minutes a night. He might play fewer minutes than he did last year. I, I just think that there is a there is a significant drop between Walker Fournier uh, down to uh, quickly, and those guys will get. You know, you'll be running more of a three man backcourt with a little bit of quickly thrown in there versus let's just give everyone twenty eight a night. That, that's how I see it, Gavin. You're you're local there in New York. You'll have some different opinions, and we'll see how that goes. But that is going to be something that is uh, interesting to watch. And now let's talk about your bench group. We've already mentioned two of these guys, Rose and Quickly. We've mentioned Alec Burks as well. The other two positions I think are pretty uh, pretty self explanatory, and we've already talked about Nerlens Noel. So I guess Obi Toppin's the last one there in that group of five. There's no real guys that are going to be threatening to take minutes away from this uh, this bench group of players, is there? No, um, there. I, I think the starters are, are going to play significantly. Um, I think Rose is probably the one guy you're looking at from a fantasy perspective, outside of maybe Nerlens Noel if you need a weekly fill in in terms of steals and blocks, but. Rose will continue to play a relatively significant role, if, if not one as great as he had last season. It is worth noting that he had the best shooting season of his career, by at, at least in terms of his time with the Knicks, by long shot, both in terms of threes. It was just absurdly good on long twos. And, and towards the end of the season, basically was 98% on floaters, which none of those things, I think, are, are necessarily sustainable. So... Rose is a guy um, in a standard league, I think is, is borderline draftable, but maybe not of that much interest. And then outside of that, unless Julius Randle suffers a long-term injury, you can't really justify picking Obi Toppin. And again, Noel, probably more of a fill-in guy. Burks and Quickly, I, I think both talented, Quickly in particular, I'm a huge, huge fan of. And there will almost certainly be a point this year where, where Derek Rose or Kemba Walker misses significant time. And that would be the point to pick up Quickly. But outside of that, there isn't a lot of fantasy relevance for him, even if he is a great talent. I've heard of some some people mentioning about the Knicks saying, well, you know, Obi Toppin, he's in his second year, he's going to take a step forward, and it's going to allow Tom Thibodeau to, to really reduce Julius Randle and, and play him 32 minutes a night so Toppin can get more. Now, to me, that's pure insanity, and, and it's just not going to happen. Is there any, any possibility that that's going to happen? Uh, no, I think it's I think it's pretty impossible. I was going to say unlikely, but it's not. I, I don't really, I wouldn't even give it that much credence um i no I, unless Ju- julius randall gets hurt and that yeah. it was something we talked about in the podcast recently which uh, plausible like he was stunningly healthy last year taking on a a massive massive load um then obi would would have some interest but outside of that he's just now nah, he's not getting over 12 13 minutes a game because they made it pretty clear that they don't see him as a guy who can play some minutes as a small ball five yeah, and, and they've got three other capable centers there in Gibson, Noel, and Mitchell Robinson. Like I said this on the podcast the other day. Like imagine Tom Thibodeau saying, Julius, we know how good you are. You're all-star, all-NBA player, but I'm going to reduce your minutes because I really believe in keeping you fresh and healthy so I can play the uh, the, the second-year player who struggles uh, defensively uh, in, in those minutes. Like he, He's just not going to do it. Like This guy's insane. He's just not going to do that sort of thing. So we can eliminate that possibility. But what we can also eliminate, Gavin, is the possibility of excessive sweat by using sweat block. Sweat block is the doctor created and doctor recommended formula for those of us who suffer from excessive sweating conditions, which can be socially embarrassing, professionally embarrassing. You put those sweat block wipes, you get them, put it on before you go to bed. Wake up the next day, have your shower, off to work, off to school, and you're covered for up to seven days. Maybe it's a twice-week application, but this is not an everyday thing. These are so, so strong at reducing that excessive sweat, and you can get them now for 20% off at sweatblock.com if you use our promo code Locked On, You can find them at Amazon. You can find them at your local CVS as well, but why wouldn't you save 20%? Go to sweatblock.com, use the promo code Locked On, and save 20% off your sweat block wipes. This fill-up might sound familiar for those of you who are watching TV, sport, you got you want one one device to watch your sport. Then you watch your favorite shows on another one. Then you watch your highlights on your phone. And then you borrow someone else's login for other shows. It's just a clutter. Everything's all over the place. Well, there is a simple way to get all of that entertainment you love into one place and finally get your TV together. And it is called Direct TV Stream. It brings your live TV and on-demand shows all together in one place for the first time so you can see your favorite shows, movies, and sport all in that one spot. That means no more juggling remotes and no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, there's no annual contract, so get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required and content varies by package. Let's talk 
uh, injuries. Gavin Mitchell Robinson missed the uh, second half of last season with a fracture in his foot. We saw today news in Indiana about TJ Warren's fractured foot, not particularly healing all that well. Has there been any update on Mitch and his foot? Is he ready to go to begin the season? Yeah, so we heard reports of him over the summer still being in a boot. Obviously, he was not a guy who was invited back to participate in the Team USA select process. Um, it was kind of hard to tell if that was because of injuries or because he had previously had issues there the, the year before off the court wise. Um, as far as I know, he's going to be perfectly healthy to start the year. And and there, there really aren't very many concerns about that. I think the biggest curiosity with him is seeing that added weight. I mean, he came into the league, I think, right around 225 pounds now, all the way up to 275. So that is certainly something to watch. If that's bad weight, if it saps any of his foot speed, any of his athleticism, that would be a death knell for a player who relies on those two qualities. If it's good weight, if, if he has a little bit more power and a little bit more heft and the ability to bang with the Joel and beads of the world, that will again be a further separator from New Orleans Noel, who has uh, forever lacked in that capacity. Yeah, no, so not the most robust, uh, robust frame, uh, and that that does limit him at times. Let's um, let's talk about Emmanuel quickly, who we did speak about earlier on today. You know, quickly had uh, I uh, said this earlier in the show I did today that yeah you know, I didn't like the pick when he was that was made by the Knicks at pick twenty five or whatever it was, and he obviously proved me wrong there. I think he does get a little bit overrated in terms of what he can do. I'm not sure how good of a facilitator as a pure point guard he is, although he did take strides there and showed some pretty good stuff in summer league. But again, at this point, he is the fourth guard on this team, and you could make that argument that Burks gets some minutes at guard there as well. So what can quickly do to improve this season? Uh, and, and to get him into a larger role than, than what he was in last season, it feels pretty tough to get there. So what what does he improve on to get that that role and to take a step forward this season? I think it's continuing to improve his handle. Obviously, the, the big question among Knicks fans is, can he be a point guard? That's This season, he will not have to answer that question because it's going to be Kemba Walker and Derrick Rose on the ball running things for essentially the, the entire season as long as those two remain healthy, which is always a little bit of an iffy question. But he did show flashes in Summer League of, of throwing some brilliant passes. And if not an ability to manipulate a defense from his handle and ability to utilize his gravity to take his guy far, far out of a play, then beat him off the dribble and and then find the next pass. So he's not necessarily an elite creator, but he is someone I think down the road could rack up pretty decent assist numbers just because you really do have to guard him 30 feet. And and as his name implies, he's, he's very quick um, off the ball. So he's someone that I get from a fantasy perspective, maybe in a dynasty league, I, I would certainly take a shot on. I, I would bet on the shooting talent. I, I still think, if not star upside, he has um, long-term really good starter on a really good team upside. And uh, that's that's an enticing thing as a fantasy player, um, especially if you're looking for someone who could shoot a lot of threes and, and hit them at a high rate. Yeah, I do think that he is the guy that they are, they are banking on to develop into their long-term point guard. Of course, Kemba and Rose aren't any long-term solutions, but you know, Tom Thibodeau doesn't play for the long-term. But I think that they would like for quickly in, in two years' time, three years' time to ascend into that role. I think it's just going to be pretty hard for him to yeah, really eat into that outside of injury, which, of course, yeah, Rose is going to miss time and Kemba's knees aren't aren't particularly great. There is going to be some time available there for him. Um, and then I guess the other thing is, like, what about like Juice McBride, who was picked this year in the second round, who, really good defender as a point guard, shows some flashes there. Is there any is there any chance that quickly could lose some of that to McBride this year? I thought he was really impressive in summer league as well. He was awesome in summer league. And, and you know, Tibbs is going to love his yeah. defense, but I think for Deuce to break into the rotation, he is going to have to get better at utilizing that athleticism you see defensively on offense with his ability to get to the basket. And look, we saw you that that massive, massive dunk um, against the Hawks. He is has some bounce around the basket. He, ha- he actually has a really good handle. Right now, the question is, how functional is it? Can he actually string together moves and beat his guy off the dribble? And it, it seems like he's lacking for a little bit of confidence in that respect. But again, really young player. Um, has a lot of promise, and he's going to get an offseason with Johnny Bryant, who's previously trained Damian Lillard and Donovan Mitchell. So I expect him throughout the year to improve, and, and maybe by the end of the season, he's breaking through rotation and having some performances. But everyone healthy, Josh, I, I honestly do not think he plays this year just because quickly very much has that role cemented. And I think it's a little bit of a, a stereotype with Tibbs that he always just wants to play the best defender. 
when at the point guard spot, it's more often true that he wants to play the guy with the most attacking mentality. And right now that is very much quickly, even though McBride is certainly not a guy who's shy to take shots within the rhythm of the offense and is proved himself to be a much better three point shooter than a lot of people expected coming out of West Virginia. Yeah. I suppose that's why he played Alfred Payton so much last year, Gavin. Yeah, it was, it's again, it's mentality. It's not effectiveness, Josh. <laughs> let's, uh, let, <laughs> let's go on to the next question now. Um, Kemba Walker, we heard that you know, press conference where they asked the question to Kemba, are you going to play back-to-backs? And you know, Tibbs is you know, shouting from the, from, the, uh, from the green room, oh, of course he's going to play. Like, is he going to be as insane as he usually is in pushing a guy like Kemba into minutes and to back-to-backs? Or will, there be, will he listen, I guess, to medical advice on Kemba with his busted-up knees that you know, Tibbs will, will ease him back? Like, how much... Because, again, from a fantasy perspective, there's two things. We would love for Kemba to stay healthy and play 35 minutes a night. Like, that would be awesome. But then we also acknowledge that that increases the risk of injury. But we also think, okay, well, if Tibbs eases back on him and we get 70 games or 75 games out of Kemba, but maybe it takes 29 minutes per night. Like, which direction do you think he's going to go? Is he going to just lean hard into this? Or is he going to actually take medical advice on board? I think Derek Rose is the great mitigating factor here. I think if not for his presence, Tibbs would, would sort of push through some of that stuff and, and consistently play Kemba, to your point, 35-plus minutes a night. But Tibbs loves Rose. He's a human security blanket for him. He, he trusts um, what he brings in terms of running an offense, in terms of his ability to attack the rim, get all the way to the basket. And, and last year, I mean – perhaps not a spectacular season defensively, but was very, very solid in that respect. And physically, even um, at a couple years older, I think brings a little bit more on that end of the floor than Kemba does. So I think that will balance things out. There will certainly be nights where you're cringing and you're like, oh, they're in double overtime. Maybe maybe Kemba shouldn't go over 50 minutes. And that, that will happen every once in a while. But I think by and large, he will listen to medical advice and, and rest Kemba as often as is needed. And, and as I noted in the minutes projection, I, I think he will keep his role very much manageable given Rose's presence. Though you will see lineups with both of them out there together. What's your favorite built bar, Gavin? Oh, wow. Uh, oh man. I, you know, I think the, the beauty of built bar, I would say is, is in its variety. I think it's, it's that you can, you can pick any of the, any of the core eight, any of the new flavors and go out there. I'm, I'm, I'm a coconut guy though, Josh, uh, Tried and true. Yeah, coconut is a uh, is a very good flavor. It's my son's favorite flavor out of the built bars. I'm a cookies and cream guy, as people who listen to this podcast are well aware. But even if you like orange or raspberry or mint or double chocolate, built bar has you covered. These are the best tasting protein bars ever. You can taste that flavor. They just it's like a candy bar, but it's not just about great taste because these are also healthy. 17 to 18 grams of protein, 130 to 180 calories, four to five grams of sugar, and four to five grams of net carbs. And you can get these delicious, healthy protein bars for 15% off by using the promo code LOCKED15 at built.com. So go to built.com, get as many boxes as you want, throw them into your cart and save 15% by using the promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 at built.com. Built Bar are the best tasting protein bars ever. Football season is upon us. College football has started. The NFL, we are ready to go in a couple of days. And it is time to put your football knowledge to the test at Bet Bet BetOnline is the place to place all of your football bets for this upcoming season. Get all the updated odds, props, and contests, including... Online's biggest half-million-dollar NFL mega contest and the world's largest $200,000 NFL survivor contest. Open now at BetOnline. Be sure also to take advantage of their opening day super promo. Place a bet on the Thursday, September 9th, season opener between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Dallas Cowboys. And if you lose, your bet will be refunded up to $25 for new customers who sign up using the promo code NFL100. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, from basketball to boxing to football even your favorite Vegas casino game. So don't wait. Take advantage of all their offers for the 2021 season right now. BetOnline are your online sportsbook experts. Last question for you, Gavin. Julius Randle obviously had a great season, a season that, honestly, if we had have talked, because we didn't, I didn't do season previews last season, but we had, we'd have talked before last season, the overwhelming question would have been, how much do Knicks fans hate Julius Randle and want him off this team? Because that was, and you'd be well aware of this, that was the prevailing sentiment across Knicks forums and message boards. It was like, get this dude off this team. He is trash. Get rid of him. And then he blows up. Like, he goes crazy. He basically plays de facto point guard. His usage is through the roof. It didn't work particularly well in the playoffs. His efficiency fell into the toilet. He went from like a 27% three-point shooter to a 40% three-point guy. Usage up. He was doing everything. But this team is different this year. You've got an upgrade from Alfred Payton to Kemba Walker. You've got an upgrade from Reggie Bullock to Ivan Fournier. You've got RJ Barrett potentially taking another step forward this year. So my question to you is, 
How much of a step back does Julius Randle take? Is he still going to be that de facto guy who runs everything with the high usage and plays basically as a point guard? Or will we see that offensive load be reduced somewhat now that there are better offensive players around him? I, I think you see an uptick in two-point efficiency. Maybe yep. the the rate stats go down a little bit, but I honestly don't see them dropping off much. Just because, to your point, there were so many games, I think particularly as the season went on, and he started to get a, a little bit tired, and that, that didn't have anything to do with the work he, he did in the offseason, which was just ridiculous. It was that he was carrying a load that was, I don't know, like 20% higher than he had at any point in his career and being asked to – I mean, be the, the light, the rain, the sun, the moon, everything, everything you could ask for um, for the New York Knicks. And, and to your point, Josh, this season, he most certainly will not have to do that. And I think people are are underestimating just how much easier things are going to be from with, with Kemba and Evan Fournier in the backcourt. It's just you, you're going from I mean, I, I've said this with Mitchell Robinson, too. They're going from the worst shooting point guard in recent NBA history um, in, in he who shall not be named. And um <laughs> And like, honestly, like in Reggie Bullock, a guy who we saw in the playoffs, like if you were willing to aggressively play off him or hide your worst defender on him, you could shade help towards Julius. And he he couldn't take advantage of it unless you gave him room for an open three. Um, and, and I think teams would have learned from the Hawks and done that a whole lot this year, except now you have a guy in Evan Fournier who playing on with, with decent teammates for the first time in his life shot 46% from three um, on the Celtics last year. So I think Julius is going to have a lot more room to operate. You're going to see him sort of return to his bulldozer ways in, in terms of getting to the basket, which dissipated a lot last year, particularly, again, in that second half of the season where he, he sort of settled into someone who the majority of his offense was, was step-back twos and fadeaways and contested threes and threes off the dribble, which he got really, really good at. But he's still not Steph Curry, right? That, that, that was way too much a part of his game. So I think you're going to see his physicality really come to fruition. I, I wish he got a couple of minutes a game as a five. That's not really tips his style. It's going to be Nerlens and Mitch at the spots because I think he could really feast offensively if he was playing there. But despite that, the, the efficiency is going to go up from two. From three, I'd expect it to stay about the same because I think he'll be getting better shots. But to your point, that shooting season, even with real improvements, was probably a little bit of an outlier just because he had literally had one season in his career before that over 30%. Um, but last season, he shot at a far higher volume than he ever had in his career. So I, th I think the truth is somewhere in the middle, and it leans towards him being a very good shooter. Yeah, look, he could easily remain a very good shooter and still see a decrease in his three-point percentage because it went up so, so far. And like 40% yeah. three-point shooter on volume is very, very hard to do. And if he, he could remain a 37% three-point shooter on that volume, and it's still really, really good. And it would be a step back from where he was last season. So I think we need to be uh, understanding that yeah, he's going to see the ball a little bit less. The you know, two-point volume is going to drop a little bit. Hopefully, the efficiency makes up for it. But there is going to be some changes to the way this Knicks offense runs. Of course, Gavin, you're going to have everything Knicks for us over on Locked on Knicks throughout the preseason, training camp, heading into the regular season. So people can check you out over there on the Locked on Knicks podcast. Thanks for coming on uh, Locked on Fantasy Basketball with me. Yeah, appreciate it, Josh. Uh, yeah, and we're, we're excited to bring everyone Nick's coverage and always excited to tune into your fantasy coverage. And that'll do it for today's show. Don't forget to follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on the Odyssey app on YouTube. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe, tell your friends, share it around. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.